Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World, and I am sitting with one of my dearest friends, Tony and Emmy Award winner Kristen Chenoweth, who's getting ready to release her brand new album called For the Girls, September 27th. Yes. How are you? I'm good. How are you, honey? Look, we're sitting in a recording studio here. I know. At Concord, right? Uh, yes, and none of us, neither one of us age. <laughs> I love that. I story. know. We don't. We don't. All right. I have heard snippets of this. What an incredible album. How did this all come about? After the last record, The Art of Elegance, I was like, what do I want to do next? And I always just write songs that I've always wanted to sing down, and I kind of see where that's going to lead. I didn't set out to do like a female empowerment record, but I'm looking at the list, and I'm thinking, it's Dolly, it's Edie Gourmet, it's Doris Day, it's Judy, it's Barbara, it's Patsy, it's Reba, you know, it's all of them, and Carol King. And I was like, why am I not making the album? And then as time evolved, Steve Tyrell, my producer, goes, I said, it's for, it's kind of for the women, you know, this record. It's kind of turning goes, it's for the girls. And I was like, that's it. For the girls and the men who love us. That's kind of what happened. Yeah. It just it naturally evolved. The songs are amazing. There must be so many numbers you were thinking of using. How did you wheedle it down? It was horrible. It was hell on earth. I didn't, I mean, there's some that didn't make it. There's a Bonnie Raitt song, I Can't Make You Love Me, that didn't, that, you know, there's other songs that will, I think there's going to be a part two to this. So many songs I couldn't record that I wanted to. So many. There's Karen Carpenter's song that I wanted on there. But, you know, when you're looking A to Z, I'm still old school enough to look at a story of an album, and I want it, and that, I want it to have an arc. And that's just kind of what happened when I laid out the, the numbers. I was like, it has to start with the way we were, Barbara, and then go into, you know, Leslie Gore. And it just, it just naturally evolved. It was hard, though. I'm not very good at cutting. You did a beautiful job on this. Because I was going to say, you have so many other hit albums. What did you want to achieve with this one? I was scared, honestly, when I when I started seeing that it was a lot of covers, especially by women who've been very strong. You know, I Will Always Love You with Dolly. And, you know, the, the man that got away, Judy. It's like, how do you touch how do you touch Patsy Cline? That was the hardest one because I hear nothing but her in it so I, I I stopped listening to Patsy which she saw she saw I listen to her all, all the time I stopped listening to her and I said what is what does crazy mean for you Kristen don't you don't have to do her exact phrasing and her exact so my challenge in this was celebrating the women all the all of our girls but also putting my own stamp on it it's scary I feel like I achieved it mostly crazy I'm a little still like oh because I still he'll still hear Patsy Cline doing it but I did my own version. Yeah. Crazy is gorgeous. Just so you know, everything on this album is gorgeous. You made them all your own, which is really great. Now we have to talk about duets. I mean, that's crazy. Look at the people. Who do you have doing duets with you? <laughs> I have Ariana Grande, my little baby, yeah. who I've watched grow up. I just, it was my dream to have her on there because, you know, I mentor her. Yeah. And, and actually, she teaches me a lot, too. Um, and that's that's the gift of, you know, generational. And the women who've come before me, Dolly and Reba, I never thought they'd say yes. <laughs> when they did, I was like, what? You know, I couldn't believe it. Um, and then I always wanted to do something with Jennifer Hudson. Um, we kind of fell in love with, with each other when we did Hairspray Live. And I would just watch her in awe. Uh, and she would say, you know, you're you're crazy like you're high e flat up. i'm like you're crazy and i just was looking for the right thing and she said yes they all said yes so thanks ladies for that i love you it must make you feel so wonderful here you are growing up listening to these incredible icons and then you get to work with them nuts i never when i when i first approached dolly i had the idea of doing here you come again looking better than a body has a right remember that song yeah. And she was like, oh, if we do a song, I want to do one I wrote. And I thought, she's not going to, she's not going to do I Will Always Love You. Is she going to, she's going to, she going to, I passed out. I, I, she gave us that song and she, she sang on it. And what I loved about her performance on this, on our track is that she has no rules. She sang it differently than she's ever sung it. She's awesome. I cried. Yeah. The ugly cry. I still can't believe it. The pretty cry. Thank you. I, st I try. My lashes, as long as they stay on, it's okay. Well, I want to go back to the beginning. When did you first realize that you could actually sing? How old were you? I was like eight. Yeah. And I, they had an audition at church for a church solo, and they were all adults. 
it was an adults, you know, choir audition. And I told my mom I wanted to go. She's like, it's not for kids. I said, I don't care, I still want to go. And I went, and I was the only kid there, and she was a little embarrassed. And I sang a song called Jesus, I Heard You Had a Big House. Yes, you can't write it. And I got, I got the solo. <laughs> and then I sang it in church, and I saw the reaction of what it's like to sing about something you actually believe and love, and then that other people can receive something from it. I loved that. So, but my parents said they knew I was adopted, and they don't sing, and nor should they ever. But um, they literally were like, is it us? I was singing to the Wizard of Oz record, ironically, when I was a little bitty, and they were like, is, is, it, is it us, or is she really good? You know, they just didn't know what to do with that. But they helped guide me, as you can see. What was that defining moment for you when you said, I want to try like, to make a career at this, and maybe try to make a living at this? Honestly, I always knew. I think it, I always knew it was my purpose. And I think that's a gift when you're a young person and you know your purpose. A lot of kids don't find their purpose till later. But I always knew. And I, I didn't know if it would be in acting or singing or dancing or what it was going to be. But I knew when I would listen and be quiet that I was being told, you are going to be doing that. And I never thought about not doing it. I didn't know what I didn't know. So I just went for it. Also, I, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. I tell my kids all the time, if you can see yourself doing something else, go do it, because this is a hard business, but it's the most rewarding if you love it. Yeah. Talking about your kids, you're talking about your boot camp. Yeah. How many years? Five. Five years of Kristen Chenoweth Broadway boot camp at the, at the Chenoweth Theater in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, at the most beautiful performing arts center, which where all the Broadway shows come, and symphonies and acts come through there. I'm really proud of it. And my kids, now I have three this year who's, who've been re repeat um, camp goers that are in uh, music majors in college. I have one at OCU, my alma mater. I have one at um, uh, Juilliard, and I have one in um, uh, Miami University. That must make you feel so good because you're, this is a tough business, and not everybody goes out of their way to help. And you put this boot camp together where you have the best of the best teaching these kids how this business works and moving them forward and letting them know you're really good at what you do. Go after it, right? Yeah, I want to be the light for them. I want to give them hope. If they, especially when they go and they have the experience of boot camp, which is Tony Award Week, as you know, every year, they bond with each other. I build in time for them to bond. We have parties. We got to do karaoke. We sing at a baseball game. We do things so that they can. And then when they leave camp, they cry because they've made their friends. They've met, they've met people like them. I didn't really have that opportunity, and I wanted to create it, especially in my home state. Well, you've done a beautiful job with that. Thank you. I've had a lot of help. Really? Richard J. Alexander, um, John McDee, Faith Prince, oh my gosh, Chris Siebert, Lara, Lara Teeter, Kevin Chamberlain this year, Kyle Bi Bi Biork. I've had so, that's too much, too much to, to list. Uh, Michael Orland, Mary Mitchell, they've all come and they've been major, major. They're way more talented than me anyway, but they just, they're just awesome. They're just awesome. You're they are. So, you're so humble. It's a truth. It's a truth. I'm just being honest. Let's talk about touring. Will you tour at the album? Yeah, and I have an exciting announcement coming up that I can't make yet, but I'll be around. Yes. All your fans here are going to be tweeting, like, what is that? <laughs> what can't she tell us yet? I know. I'm kind of always on tour, as you know, Richie, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it pretty hard soon. And also, you know, I have a couple of holiday movies coming out in the Tabernacle. Let's talk about those. Let's talk about Tabernacle. That's the yeah. first, right? Yes. Tell us what that is. It's the Tabernacle, Mormon Tabernacle Choir, um, which in my opinion is a rite of passage for a lot of artists and singers. I grew up watching the Tonys, the Tabernacle Choir Christmas show, and the uh, Miss America pageant. That says a lot about me, okay? We had three stations, people. Three. Maybe four with PBS. So... I really wanted to do it three times. I've tried. I've been asked to do it, and I never could with schedule. And finally, um, and and I don't believe um, like the Mormons do, but but it was important for me to make music with them, and we did. And we never was I treated with more kindness and graciousness than with the Tabernacle. And you have two holiday movies. Yes. What are those? Well, one's for Netflix. Uh, stars Emma Roberts. I play her crazy aunt Susan. So you can imagine. That's all I need to say, right? It's called Holiday. Okay. The other movie is 
uh, and special to me for different reasons. It's a subject matter that is a very much a big part of my life, an idea I had with the producer, and we brought it to Hallmark and they bought it. And um, it's called A Christmas Love Story, and I play a choir teacher uh, who gave up her Broadway. Uh, she was a Broadway star, and she changed her life to become a, a teacher. And a, a kid comes in from across town, and you learn who, who they are to each other. And there's, of course, a love story in the middle of it with Scott Wolf, which was, didn't suck, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And then Shelley Wright and I wrote the um, title song for it. Beautiful. So that's a first for me. Okay. Since this is Broadway World, so many of your fans want to know, when are you returning to Broadway? Is there something in the future that you want to work on? One of the musicals you've been working on, like Tammy Faye Baker or one of these? Okay, so Robert Horn yes. is... Um, Tony Award winner, Tony. Robert Horn. That's right. Is And David Yazbek are working, Tony Award winner, are working on um, the the lyrics and the, and the book. And, and I've been waiting, as you know, for a long time. But I want to get it right. So we've got the right team, and now I'm like TikTok. So boys, hurry up. Henry Krieger and I am ready. Okay? We're ready to go. So y'all hurry up. Um, the what a dream team. It's a dream team. And also it's a dream role. Yeah. Um, the lashes in and of themselves, but also her heart. I think, too, Death Becomes Her is pretty exciting. Um, I've read Act One. Marco Panette's incredible. Gary Griffin's the director. Another great team. So hurry up, y'all. Hurry up. Death Becomes Her I, I got for a while. Actually, Tammy Faye is timeless as well. So, you know, I'm just, I'm as you know, I've always led with original work. I love doing that. Or roles that haven't been done in 40 years, like Lily Garland in 20th Century and, and The Apple Tree. But um, I'm, I'm really excited about these two. Yeah. You bring so much joy to millions of people around the world with what you do. What does that mean to you? Probably the most important thing, the kindest thing you could say. Because the truth is, my voice, I, you know, we know I sound like a sectelium and I know that I'm petite and kind of Betty Boopish. But, and my, my, my voice might not be for everybody, but when someone says you've touched people that means a lot that's what I want and that's what I look for in my in my friends like it's a selfish thing like who's who's teaching me and who's touching me and then it's a circle then you can maybe give it back to and finally you have this gorgeous album that's getting ready to hit out there on September 27th what is it as you're sitting here like doing all these interviews like what does this album mean to you it's like a culmination of my life yeah. um what I, my parents first heard it and they were weeping because they know what Reba and Dolly mean to me. And of course, Jennifer and Ari have come behind me and I want to you know, take care of them. Um, although Jennifer's incredibly seasoned and doesn't need my help, but it's nice to have that friendship, you know? But the music, are the, is the, the singers are who I listened to growing up. And when my dad saw the cover, it's just me in a white t-shirt, and he goes, you forgot your pants. I said, no, that was on purpose, dad, because I don't, I'm not going to wear anybody's pants. I've got my own. And he was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, you just forgot your pants. But, you know, it, I'm proud of it. It's, it's my whole life right there. It is a glorious album. It is always a pleasure to catch up with you. You have millions of fans here at Broadway World that always love to know what you're up to. Have the best time with the new album. Thank you very much. Miss you. Love you. I love you.